it for you because I know I, <laughs> we were texting and I talked to you maybe in, I think, late February, early yes. March. You know, you're going to spring training yeah. and you do all that, but then you had to come back home and now you're not doing anything at all in terms well, of baseball. It's not like I'm not doing anything. Right, I, still right. have, I am still employed. Yes. So and you're far. still working. We'll talk about articles. You are still we'll working. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. So, yeah, I still, yeah. You know, we still have to, I'm still required to write, you know, so I still kind of reach over, you know, people over the phone. But like you said, this is today would have been opening day at Yankee Stadium. That's precisely what would have been talked about. You know, we didn't know maybe if they had extended the schedule because they had an off day, maybe Garrett Cole would be pitching in his second uh, start as a Yankee. And we probably would have been talking about that. And now, um, you know, March 13th, everything got shut down. I stayed another extra week in Tampa. So we stayed till about the 20th and then flew back to New York because we're a little concerned about the travel. And obviously we know that that was the right decision uh, at this point, but yeah, definitely. This is the weirdest, uh, spring I've ever had and and it really in a weird way I just don't know what to do with myself yeah, yeah, <laughs> Marley if we do see uh baseball games being played at some point this summer fingers crossed of course yeah. um what could you potentially see that looking like are you expecting you know maybe if it, yeah. let's say we start July 1st is it empty arenas yeah. yeah I mean empty stadiums for the first month and change like what is that yeah. sort of what could that I sort of look like I think that's sort of the blueprint that we have right now you're absolutely on the right track Brian I don't think if we are going to have games in July which is sort of the best case scenario for MLB as we well know there's nothing certain right we know nothing and, yeah. and as you guys know we haven't even seen the worst of, of this pandemic so we're bracing for that and waiting to see what the the Center for Disease Control actually tells us right but if, if we're going to go in a best case scenario, which is what we should do, right? Just stay hopeful that we start in July. I don't see how you get uh, a stadium full of 45,000 fans. I just don't see it, right? It's, uh, it's going to be a very, we already know that the Olympics are canceled and the Olympics were in August, right? Like the core, obviously there were Olympics in July, right? Like it started in July, but the core of the Olympics is August and that's canceled. And it was precisely, not only because the, the athletes can't train right now. As you guys know, that was actually the first thing that Olympic athletes don't really have places to train. So it would be incredibly unfair for them to go and, and be prone to injury, even like not even about competition injury. But the main thing is it was about the great crowds that they're trying to limit. And I don't see them, Brian. I don't see great crowds in July. I do think that if baseball starts, I think we will start with uh, with empty stadiums. I know I know nothing under right, right. This right. is just a guess of how right. It would be. But the yeah. thing that also makes it difficult is that like with baseball compared to other sports, it's going to be harder for just the athletes to get in that rhythm again, right? Because <laughs> then we also have to weigh that. Like, how long is it going to take to you know get your swing and so that these guys aren't out pulling hamstrings and playing the worst baseball we've ever seen. So how do you think, how do you think there's that impact as well, just sort of weighing into when this can eventually start, if we can even get started? Well, that's a very good point. And it's like, and I, pardon me, because my phone's, it's on, my phone is on, so I'm turning it off. Well, you're, you're right, you're busy <laughs> You see, writing. this is live, people. Yeah, this yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that one of the things that you just mentioned, one of the things that's been thrown around is to do it pay-per-view, right? And, um, and that's going to be interesting to play without fans. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak to like players like Zach Britton and Adam Jones who played in that Baltimore game, right? You guys remember when, yeah. uh, when, when, this, when everything was kind of, you know, in the city of Baltimore, things were not going very well and they had to close everything and it didn't allow fans in the stadium. And one of the things that Zach Britton said was the most amazing thing I've heard from a player. He said, from the bullpen, we could hear Gary Thorne, our play-by-play -play guy calling the game. They That's could crazy. hear it in the bullpen. Wow. <laughs> so it's just extraordinary to hear things like this, right? And then to your point, Dex, I, I'm so sorry, Brian and Dex, the point is like these players are going to need a second spring training, right? Yeah. Like they have to prepare. And it's, and it's funny because uh, as you guys know, I talked to a bunch of managers last week. I talked about 20 of them and I uh, put 15 in a story. Yeah, we're going to get to and, that. And mm -hmm. some of them would say, uh, well, some of the pitchers are going to have a harder time, but most of them said that if we start in July, we'll see if that happens, the shorter period of time actually affects the hitters and the, and the position players because you have no one to, where are you going to taste on ground balls, right? right. Like where, yeah. who's going to hit ground balls to you? Who wants to get pitcher timing in a cage? It's just really, really hard. Now pitchers have an entirely different situation and the longer this, you know, goes on and the longer we don't play baseball, 
it sucks for pitchers because they have no yeah. idea. You always work towards a specific target date, right? You go to our, okay, this is report day for pitchers and catchers. A week later, I'm going to throw my first bullpen. Three later, days later, I'm going to throw the first side session. I'm going to throw another bullpen. It goes like that, right? I have my first start where I throw 30 pitches. Then I have my second start where I throw 50, blah, 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 leading yeah. up to opening day. That's over. And yeah. not only that, we have no idea what's going to happen. How does the pitcher stay fit? How do, uh, what yeah. do they do? I mean, really, I mean, they're first world problems. Let's be very, very clear. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right? yeah. But, There's bigger things going on, right? You know, how, what, what do they do? What is, what is, you know, the Yankees just paid $324 million for Garrett Cole. And, yeah. and you can't risk Garrett Cole getting an injury. So yeah. it's going to be interesting what they decide to do. So, and then what? Noah Syndergaard gets hurt during the quarantine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, he explain gets, uh, that. He's John just like uh, Chris Sale, too. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm going to just get, I'm gonna just get this out the way true. now. Might yeah. As well. He's like, I'm going to just get it out the way now. <laughs> Harley, I wanted to ask you, too, because yeah. when you were down in spring trading, and it's weird because at the time before you came back, you know, you spent that extra week in Tampa, all this is starting to sort of yeah. bubble. What I, I know there was a time where they closed off locker room, I mean, the clubhouse, and you were not able to talk to the yes. players. But what did you hear from yeah. people that time about the uncertainty? There was so much uncertainty, obviously, in the world going on. Well, you- and the, the funny thing is, like, as you guys know, a couple of days before, before everything was shut down, and, and one of the things that prompted the full shutdown were not only CDC uh, recommendations, right, of not no gatherings of over 10 people, so that's sort of where it started, but also the fact that minor leaguers tested positive. That was really, really important because there were no baseball players that had tested positive and the Yankees had two very young minor leaguers test positive. Now we know that the Boston Red Sox have also a minor leaguer, but we only heard of three. And you guys know that by mathematics, just think about there are 30 major league teams with 40 players just on the 40 man roster, right? There's about 60 players in spring training. You're gonna tell me that 1500 players just by numbers, no one has it. We just don't know, right? And we know now that everything is asymptomatic, which is kind of interesting to know that, right, that you could have it and not know the the coronavirus. But it was just so strange in the beginning to not be able to be in the clubhouse with them. But I have to say, Dex, and you guys know this, Brian, too, they loved it. They're like, oh, we don't have to talk to the press. This is awesome. We can just hang out in here and not have to talk to them. And then after a few days later, when everything shuts down, and you start texting with these players that they actually tell you that they miss interaction with me- members of the media, that they miss reading stuff about their teams. Because mm. one of the things, one of the phenomenons that's happening is that no one wants to read about the coronavirus anymore. They actually want to read about <laughs> yep. their favorite athletes. They want to read, and we have nothing to say because right. nothing is going on. Like, what, what am I going to tell you? So it's been, a, it's been, let's just say, a struggle. But in the beginning, Dex, the athletes were pretty happy we weren't in that clubhouse. We were in that clubhouse. Yeah, that, that's, that's really interesting. I want to go back to one other thing before we, yeah. we get to the, the article you wrote, too. A lot of the attention before, I thought this season was going to be very interesting, Marley, because you had everything that went on yes. with the Astros. And I was like, I wanted to see how teams were going to handle the things with them during the season. <laughs> I don't mean to – I'm not making a lot of the coronavirus in any way, but do you think this is kind of no, taking no, no. some of the – taking okay. some of the, yeah. it's taking some of the focus off the Astros of if and when baseball returns? A hundred percent. I mean, this was one of, the, one of the ways we joked around, and we have to. This doesn't mean that we're not taking this seriously. Right. You know, these are three people that are stuck in their homes in New York who would rather be covering baseball, right? So we're, we're very <laughs> we were. clear. One of them with an Astros shirt. <laughs> we're, just gonna, we're just not going to mention see, it. Marley, do you see my shirt? <laughs> You see the I show? see it. I was like, uh, oh, my God. That's uh-huh. so cool. Do you have a tattoo, too, right here? No, 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 you're right. And one of the things that we joked around was that no one was more thankful for the coronavirus than the Astros. Like, mm-hmm. who cares now that you had some trash banging and that you stole some signs? I mean, Nobody. even today, we had uh, the owner of the Astros, the millionaire Jim Crane, who you guys know I've had some exchanges with may or may not be out there during pressers oh. did some wonderful work of donation and donating a bunch of money and getting ppe and getting all this stuff right that we've come to learn and all the tests and and i actually tweeted exactly those words who cares about mm. them them stealing signs now all that matters is that everyone is together trying to solve this problem so dex you know what even though we're making a lot of it there are two 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 teams in my opinion that are very happy about this happy Right. Yes. Let's see. Let's say who benefit from this. Benefited. Happening. Yes. Number one, the New York Yankees, 
who have a bunch of injuries, and now all of a sudden, if there is a season, they're going to be the healthiest team in baseball all of a sudden, even though they had like six injured players mm. starting, you know, with, as we know, a, a Tommy John surgery for Luis Severino and, and ending with, you know, a broken rib, a fractured rib for Aaron Judge. So obviously they're going to be very healthy. And the Houston Astros that, of course, everyone stopped talking about that. And not only that, in a reduced schedule, right? We don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of talk about 120 games, right? That's sort of the number that's thrown out there. In a 120-game schedule, you can't play. You are probably not going to do interleague or very, very limited interleague. And you probably will not play every team from other divisions. Right. So maybe the Yankees will not play the Astros. We don't know that, mm. right? The Astros are in the West. The Yankees are in the AL East. The priority is to play your division. So it's going to be interesting, right? The Astros are not going to get booed all over the place because people may have their priorities straight. So absolutely, you know, like, you know, the people wearing the shirt that you're wearing on right now, they're, they're pretty happy about this. You know, happy <laughs> as happy as you can be. I yeah, mean, yeah. Even the ones, even the ones saying, you know, Houston Asterix and all that stuff, that, that talk's really gone away. Yeah. Um, it's, no it's going to be, it's going to be, it's no, nobody cares. I mean, obviously to be all certain, in all seriousness, there's much bigger things going on in the world and yes. care about the health of everybody here and those, and those players. Marley, the article you just, you wrote on ESPN, um, where you talk to all these different managers about how they are communicating with it took a team. long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was a, a lot, lot of, of people and you got a lot of people in I there. Did. Um, I, f I found it interesting in how a lot of them are using technology, like we are right now, using Zoom, like, yeah. Zoom or Skype to do to do this. For podcast. the record, I had no idea how to do this. They had to teach me. Oh, uh, don't don't, okay, don't. Just, we, see, put yourself out there like that. <laughs> this is my first Zoom call. I feel very very hip. Oh man, <laughs> Brian, your mic is out again. Oh, his mic, his mic comes out. I'm supposed to be the moron here. What's going on, Brian? No, I was, I was literally just saying this is my first Zoom call, also, and then my mic just went out. I don't oh, know so why that happened. Zoom oh. virgins. You guys yeah. are Zoom yeah. virgins. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Wait, before before we get to your ESPN story, Marley, I did have one question. Please. Um, you mentioned the 120 games sort of being this. Whatever, yeah, 120, number. 140, the, the figures I'll, that they're throwing around, well, right? We well, I was, gonna, yeah. I was going to ask, what, what are the numbers that they're throwing around? What's sort of that minimum number? Is it even yeah. as low as, say, 80 or 100? No, the minimum number that's been thrown around that, that I've heard, right, has been 100. I don't think right. that they think that a season that has less than 100 games is a legitimate season. Now, I mean, that could be up for debate, right? But it is, it is actually possible that if they play in July, and we don't know this, right? But we are going to guess that it's able to play in July. And they are, you know, the players and the MLBPA has already said that they are willing to play until, you know, Thanksgiving, until the last week of November. And that comes with an entire set of other problems, right? Yeah, you can yes. fit in 140 games, right? It's 140 games in 140 days. It's insane. You're going to need a bunch of double headers. You're going to have to be very careful, most importantly, with extra inning games. You're going to have to cut them off. You can't go on. So there's talks of ending extra inning games in the 11th inning, in the 10th inning, ending in a tie. Yes, a tie Ties. in baseball. So things like that that are being talked about because you have to protect these players' bodies. So right now, the number is being thrown around that I've heard. It's 120 and 140, Brian. Interesting, wow. too. So, so Marley, that I, yeah, I think yeah. that those numbers are interesting too. Uh, yeah. And baseball in no, late into November, who that's uh, <laughs> nobody wants. I, I mean, Mark I mean, Mark Teixeira went on ESPN. As you guys know, it's kind of weird because obviously I covered Mark, and now Texas is my teammate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit strange, you know. It, it, it's been a it's been a transition. But um, with Mark, he goes. He was telling. He was, I think, on on Trey on Wingo's show, and he goes, "I am watching. I'm going to be watching the Cowboys on Thanksgiving." So. <laughs> Not good for baseball. They don't want that. I think a lot of people are going to feel that way. 